His ice is already here and ready to strike here. A deadly shark attack off the coast of Maui has people afraid to go in the water. Ebola here in America. From planes to cruise ships to buses and stores. Parents have been throwing out plastic bottles, plenty of other items because they're worried about BPA. Oh my goodness, what am I going to do? I don't want to die. Well, the first thing I should do is stop getting freaked out by the media and start making rational judgments about risk. What is likely to kill me? ISIS? No, scary and horrible as they are, a thousand other things are more likely to hurt you or kill you. One of the bigger risks is something we do all the time and don't even think about it, driving. What if you'd never seen cars before and I told you I want to replace horses and buggies with a new form of transport that would pollute less, uh, well, more air pollution, but much less solid waste. That would be a big improvement. The only trouble with this new form of transport is that it weighs two tons and goes 60 miles per hour. And we're gonna let 16 year olds drive them. You'd say, no way, you're crazy. It's too dangerous. And you would have a point. Cars kill more than 30,000 Americans every year. That means during this TV program, odds are five Americans will die in cars. But we don't think twice about jumping in the car and driving somewhere, even at night or in the rain, which is more dangerous. I sometimes ride my bike to work through New York City traffic. This is really dangerous, though the greenies tell me I'm doing something wonderful by doing this, which probably isn't true. I do this even though bike riding kills hundreds of people every year. Most people are killed by ordinary things. Almost 5,000 Americans die crossing the street. My grandfather died that way. 4,000 people drown. 300 drown in bathtubs. More than 4,000 Americans choke to death every year. 2,000 die in house fires. Stairs kill 1,000 Americans. Heck, every year 50 children are killed by buckets. Ordinary five gallon buckets. That's why this warning is on this. Kids fall into them and drown. All these risks get far less intense news coverage than mysterious new threats like Ebola. It's here and it can kill you. In fact, the odds are overwhelmingly against you if you get Ebola. You can bleed from your eyes, your mouth, your rectum, your nose. Why not just shut down the flights and secure the borders? Why not? It's a very scary disease. Kills people in a horrible way. And had there been an epidemic here, it would have been a terrible thing. But only two people caught Ebola in America. Neither died. Even in West Africa, where there was an epidemic, more people were killed by other diseases like the flu. When the scare was at its peak, I tried to provoke the women in the Fox show outnumbered by saying this. This is an overhyped risk being pumped by news media like us, and especially you women who are more scared Excuse of me? Ebola than men. <laughs> I'm being really sexist here. Why isn't it better to be safe and not sorry? And I don't think we are prepared to handle this. I would like to see extra screenings. At every airport, every border post, what would that cost? Again, without putting up walls, no American caught Ebola here and died from it. By contrast, 100 Americans were killed by deer this year. Aren't they cute? Deer kill lots of people because we drive into them in our cars, but nobody proposes killing all the deer. We worry about Ebola, sharks, tiny amounts of chemicals in food, but nobody gets in their car and says, gee, what if I hit a deer today? Deer collisions can become a real concern. That happens more than a million times a year. So. Why do we worry about the wrong things? This book, How Risky Is It Really?, tries to explain why our fears don't match the facts. David Ropeek's the author and former director of risk communication at the Harvard Center for Risk Analysis. So why do we get these things wrong? It's not just the likelihood that we'll die, it's how we die. So if I ask you what's scarier, dying in your sleep of heart disease or in flames, you would say flames. Yeah. Even though it's less likely. So it's the nature of the experience as well as the likelihood. But even the likelihood we get wrong. Yes, we do. We Why? do. Well, partly we're enumerate. 20% of college graduates couldn't correctly answer this question. Sorry, I won't put you on the spot. Which risk is bigger, one in 10, one in 100, or one in a million? 
One in 10. Yeah, 20% of college graduates couldn't get it. So partly it's because of innumeracy, but mostly it's because risks have these psychological, emotional characteristics and the nature of the experience, and do we control it, and is it natural or man-made? From like years chemicals? of evolution that Yeah, that's trained right. Us. We learned all these back instincts back when things were simple, and now BPA and the things you talk about are more complicated, but we still use the instinctive, emotional side more to gauge what feels scary. But we need to be fearful. Just from the days when our ancestors might be eaten by the tiger, you need to fear the tiger. And God bless our risk perception system for all its flaws that we're talking about here, because mostly it works, because here we are talking tonight, right? But it so far. is prone to error. And the important part of your program is the errors can be dangerous by themselves. And it's a risk, what I call the risk perception gap, worry too much or too little is dangerous in and of itself. We worry so about the wrong things. We don't pay attention to the right ones. And we do dangerous things because we're not taking them seriously or freaked out. You write, don't get your information from Dr. Google. Don't go to Google? But go to sources that you can trust. Some of them are on Google, and some of them are on Google, and you can't trust them. So be a little skeptical of everybody who's trying to we, sell you information. If you put in the words, can you die from oh my Google God. and autocorrect, the first ones that come in are a broken heart, weed, also on the list a hangover, the flu, but these aren't the biggest killers. Whoever obviously. did this search is going to get awful spam now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was sexist on Outnumbered to say that to the women, and I just noticed our show graphic here with a woman screaming, which I didn't do that. Um, but my perception is that women are more alert to threats. You know, amongst the academics who study, are we more afraid or not, there is something called the white male effect, and I emphasize white. They asked a bunch of people of a variety of demographics, rank these 10 risks, and they all ranked them the same. You know, smoking was highest and classical music was at the bottom. They're pretty obvious. But then they said, how scary are each one? And it turns out that white men between 18 and 59 were about 10% less afraid than white women or people of color of either gender. And the supposition is that those people feel like they have less control over the world. So a risk that comes along that you can't control, that's one of those psychological characteristics. There is some evidence to your sexism. <laughs> Good. As long as there's some, off the some hook a little. <laughs> behind it. Now, lots of the things that people are scared of are pushed by the anti-chemical left. There's new research tonight about a chemical called BPA. BPA can actually pop up in your kids' teeth. Aye. Is there nothing you don't have to worry about? Is there no, there's nothing if you watch TV that you don't have to worry about. But BPA is a recent scare du jour, chemical in plastics. The companies, from all this publicity, cringe, took it out. Mm -hmm. Is there any real evidence that it hurts people? Well, there is some evidence in wildlife that BPA might be bad in the trace amounts that we're exposed to, to the fetus that's developing in terms of what happens to them when they're born and grow, and that's being investigated by the government. But, but broadly, the BPA case is a case that environmental folks, and I'm one, have brought against a lot of chemicals over the years because they represent a modern world fouling the natural world. And so if it's not fluoride and it's not phthalates and it's not BPA, it'll be something else. There's that to it as well. The things people worry about, um, like Ebola <laughs> or these trace amounts of chemicals, are much less dangerous than ordinary things that yeah. kill people. Bee stings killed 50 Americans one year. Horse kicks, 100 <laughs> Americans. You know about food poisoning, 3,000. You should worry about the chicken. That's right. And, and it makes millions sick. 55 die because they're scalded by hot water. Protect the babies. Three Americans drown in toilets. It's a big country. A lot of weird things happening to people. The big killers, though, if you look up the mortality stats, are heart disease, number one, just short of 600,000. Cancer, number two, about 70,000 less. Diseases. When you get to number five, it's accidents, all of those things. Car and that's crashes, the biggest, falling, yeah, 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 and the babies in the buckets. That's the biggest cause of death for people under 39. The biggest killers catch up to us when we live long enough now because of medicine and our wonderful, healthy lives for these diseases to catch up with a cancer. Three quarters of those cases are in people over 55 years old. But it does mean that what they say about being obese or drinking too much or smoking too much that you ought to worry about. And, 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 that, and that's a really important point. So if you're obese, you're in a different risk category than if you aren't. 
And if you're older, you're in a different category than if you're younger. So risk is relative to your subgroup. We can't just take the average risk for Americans of getting hit by a horse. I don't go on a lot of farms. Good, <laughs> good point. And I'm annoyed at the way the media covers this. Oh stuff. my gosh. You, you look at the th stories we do, and, and we have a chart on this. Well, first I should say, it's not, I, I spent a lot of time finding out how many people are killed by this or that. Bee stings kill 50 Americans a year. But the real risk specialists go further because something that kills kids is more tragic than something that kills people my age. That's right. So they compare risks by how many days does each one take off an average life? How much does it shorten your life? And then if you look at what the media covers, plane crashes, Ebola, kidnappings, school shootings, <sighs> huge news scares a lot of people, the chemicals in food, all together, maybe one day off the average life. We also cover terrorism, as we should, but even if September 11th happened every three years, and it's been more than 10, less than two days off the average life, despite those 3,000 deaths. I mean, compare that to murder, 55 days off an average life, then add on just driving, 88 days, I mean, the person who drives farther to get to the organic food store is just nuts. And then finally, smoking, 1,800, five years off the average life. A smoker worrying about getting brain cancer from his cell phone is just nuts. But people do worry that way. And the media responds to what we are likely, we out there in non-media land, uh, are going to pay attention to. And that's what scares us. So if a risk comes along that's Ebola, kills you in a really bad way, it's new, as you pointed out, right? We don't understand it. That leaves us not knowing what we need to control it, and that's powerlessness. Scarier to you and me, or us out here, fodder for what is going to get people to watch. Uh, mea culpa, I was a journalist for the ABC affiliate in Boston for 25 years. I did this. And I did this too.